Farming Chefs. If you're new to our channel, we welcome you. And if you've been watching us all along, then thank you for your support. So tell your friends and subscribe. And for those that are new here, we hope to see you on the next one. But that's for later. Let me take you into the garden right now and let me show you what's growing. There's nothing as great as feeling this greenery brush up against my legs, especially because this garden really struggled to come into its existence. But now that it is, it's growing and glowing. It's looking beautiful. These beds are actually real fun because we have a lot of different things growing in here. Here coming through and looking strong, we've got beautiful flat leaf parsley. Then we've got different types of string beans and flat green beans. We've got our coriander over here. And under the shade of these greens, the strawberry plants have really managed to set root. Strawberry plants are actually forest plants, so they love to be in mottled shade, not in open sun. And yeah, they all seem to be getting along greatly. This is not unknown. Plants thrive in each other's company. People tended to think in terms of competition, but actually we should be thinking in terms of companionship. I really do advise anybody out there, just start growing something. It doesn't matter, in your garden, on a big piece of land, your neighbor's front yard, on your own balcony, just do it. It's so satisfying and there's nothing better than seeing the bounty of your own work. Our biggest harvest right now are definitely the zucchinis and we've got our corn harvest coming up. Further along in the tunnel, we have our tomatoes ripening. The first three, four have ripened. Well. They've become red. I've harvested a few just because I'm very impatient. Philippe was very upset with me. <laughs> and he was right, they weren't as tasty. So I'm gonna be a little bit more patient from now on and we're going to wait until they're actually ripe, ripe because there's nothing as delicious as a plump, juicy, ripe tomato. Well, last week was all about figs, as you know. I hope to have informed you a little bit about the fig wasp. And I hope that you maybe, if you were looking at our recipe, have tried to make these popsicles at home. My idea actually was to make many more fig recipes. I was contemplating making a delicious recipe combining sweet and savory, inspired by my friend Kathy. Thank you, Kathy, for pointing that out. I personally also really love figs and goat's cheese. Um, but unfortunately, I was away for two days dropping off our kids and therefore I missed the last few days of fig season. Philippe was on his own, he couldn't eat all these figs, so he mostly just made our neighbors and family in the area very happy with big boxes of figs. I'm now going to have to wait for the second wave to serve. But let's go and have a little look in the tunnel. Every day we spend at least about 15 minutes tying up the tomatoes and just making sure that everything is thriving. And cucumbers are in abundance as are courgettes. All cucurbitaceae are thriving in this time of year. Even our watermelons are starting to grow big. Here's another great synthropical experiment. These are the kids' gardens. Unfortunately, a lot of kids are spending way too much time behind screens, so we do have to motivate them to get on out there. Don't think that our kids are any different. So Philippe's great plan was to give them both one box each and just give them the seed and say, there you go, girls. And the result, well, it speaks for itself. It's a wonderful wild jungle filled with good stuff. There's beautiful edible flowers in here, salads that are actually going into flower, tomato plants, small corns. I can find a squash over here. There's just so much to discover. I'm actually really loving how this turned out. So it might be hard to believe, but this is actually a new addition that was built by Philippe single-handedly in the past two days when I wasn't here. And I can tell you that I'm as amazed as you are. Currently, we've just got an improvised fence around this garden to prevent any wild boar from coming in. But the plan is to open up that fence, include this shed, which is now the tool shed and where we basically keep all our um, bigger garden tools. So they're out of the sun and they're out of the rain. And that way they're nice and close. And here we are, the compost heaps. So one of them is now in use already. While I was gone, Philippe layered his first compost pile. That is key to do that correctly and certain things really shouldn't go into a compost, but that's for a whole other episode. Our daily scraps go in here and we had the sheep um, in the stable for a few days. So we also put all that manure in here. This is going to make some very fertile compost. This one is our plastic compost. <laughs> So we have a lot of five liter water bottles that we recycle and reuse, but there's always a bit of a hassle. Where do we keep them on the farm? Because it's just an ice we're having all this plastic around. So one of these boxes has now been dedicated, the plastic compost box. Let's go and head into the kitchen. 
So I'm hoping to inspire you with a recipe that was inspired by my good friend Elisa in Italy. Elisa, if you're watching, I love you and I miss you. I've got these beautiful zucchinis here and I'm going to be making zucchini sotto olio, which means zucchini under oil. But first, let me walk you through the ingredients I've got laid out here. So first off, I've got some white cooking wine. This is a homemade white cooking wine and as you can tell, not quite white white, but it doesn't matter, it's wonderful. Then I've got some nature vinegar or white wine vinegar. This is white wine vinegar. I've got six small zucchinis. Size does matter, but not in the way that you think. Then we have garlic over here. I've got about four cloves, but that's probably a little bit too much. I've got this beautiful little thing. I'm not quite sure what you would call this in English. This is just to make sure that all your ingredients are submerged in the oil and it works as follows presses it down, works like a charm. Every time you have Greek basil, a clean bowl, a sterilized jar that is obviously big enough to hold all these zucchinis, a pot, and then I have here olive oil still from our last harvest in Italy. So this is the older oil. I would recommend you use olive oil. And I also would recommend that you wouldn't use your finest olive oil because you'll be using quite a lot of it and not necessarily consuming it afterwards. All right, and one clear lid. Let's get started. First things first, let's wash these suckers. Now's the time to get nice and sensual with them. We're going to dry them off really well, one by one. Don't give Sophie any phallus shaped objects because the jokes will be endless. <laughs> All right, nice and shiny, nice and clean. I think we're ready to chop them up. I have a small serrated knife. I like to work with them best when I'm handling vegetables. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just top off the heads and the tails as they say. This is where the flower was attached. I'm going to do that with each of them. I love to say this, but you really want to work as a production line when doing these things. Because it's going to save you so much time in the end. Don't waste too much, you just have to chop off a little bit really. And you can really tell that these are nice, young and fresh and straight from the garden because they're so, they have a real bounce to them. Next step is to slice them open lengthwise, I think you would say. And then what I'll do is I'll cut them lengthwise once more. Now we are going to de-seed them and these courgettes were harvested extremely young because that's when they're at their best. So the seed is really nothing but the beginning of the seed, but we're still going to take it out as they do have a small chance of spoiling the whole dish. I'm going to be using this colander still. So I'm gonna pop this to the back. These are all sliced lengthwise in four pieces each. And before I go onto the de-seeding and prepping all the other ingredients, I'm going to quickly put on my pot of vinegar and white wine. We're going to be quickly blanching our courgette in there. So I'm taking about a little bit less than a cup of vinegar. And let me just measure this out real quick two cups of white wine. And into that, I'm going to be adding one heaped teaspoon of salt. And that is going straight on the stove and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Give it a quick stir to dissolve the salt. Okay, and now we're going to move on to the de-seeding. Let me see where I can hide this thing. It's always good to have a few cloths at hand. So. Very simply now, just take out the young beginning of the seeds from the center as such. This is why I quarter them this way. This is a nice and easy way to de-seed a courgette. Gently scoop it out. Don't take out too much because you know this is the flesh that you'll be using and otherwise, n otherwise nothing remains. I can hear the vinegar and white wine starting to bubble away behind me. That means we have to act quickly. We don't want it all to evaporate. This is all about getting as much flesh and as little seed as possible. Challenge accepted. 
All right, guys, so this was the last zucchini, and now the next step is to slice them whatever, whichever size you like. So I like mine quite chunky, so I'm going to probably cut these in, in about six pieces each, but if you like them finer, you can do that. If you like them bigger, you can do that. It's a question of personal preference. The way I do this is I bunch them all up, and then I just roughly chop them up. There you go. I'm done transferring this into a clean bowl. I sterilized my jar and my lid before I began. That is quite important. You don't want to in, you know, introduce any kind of yeast or other type of bacteria into the jar that might funk up your whole batch. These puppies are going straight into that vinegar mix, but we're not going to boil them all at once. We'll do this in batches. I think three batches will do. Let's move on to the stove. It's always a slightly sad moment when you lift them out because they did lose their bright green color. But don't despair, that's totally normal and how it should be. However, we can all agree that that's a little sad. No? Do you agree, Philippe, or not? No. Definitely find that a little bit sad. Do you find that a little bit yeah. sad? Just tell me when you go away. Yeah. The last batch is in and now I'm going to take a clean kitchen towel so that we can make sure that these get nice and dry. That's really the most important part about this recipe. Before you put them in with your condiments and oil, you want to make sure that they are very nice and dry again. So no soggy courgettes in our jars. To bring over the first batch of courgettes. Just gonna make sure that all the excess liquid is out of them. And I'm just going to spread these out onto the cloth so they quickly cool down. That's another quite important part of it all. If you want to, you could now put a fan on this to sort of speed up this process. I'm going to start cutting my condiments, garlic and the basil. And we'll see how they are. I'm going to be using four cloves of garlic. It's quite a lot of garlic. I love garlic. You could go with one clove or two cloves as well. That's fine for this recipe. Once your garlic is chopped, we now move this into the bowl we used for our zucchinis. Make sure every little dice goes in there. And then I'm taking about a tablespoon's worth of Greek basil. And I'm also just going to roughly chop that up. The sharper your knife, the better for basil. It bruises less, so you don't want to be cross chopping here. You just want to give it one slice through. Now that everything is in that bowl, you have to wait until your courgettes are completely cooled down and are very dry. So you could either put a vent on them or just go and have a coffee or a glass of wine. That's what I'm going to do. See you in about 15 minutes. Okay, so these are nice and dry and cool and I'm going to just pat them down a little bit more with the tea towel. I'm going to now put them into this bowl. With the last bits, you really want to make sure you have all the garlic and basil in there as that's going to be making this delicious flavor. Press it down slightly. So this is all in now. You don't want to press it down too much because you might create air pockets. And what we'll do next is we'll top it off with the olive oil. Take a little break in between because you want all the oil to really penetrate all the holes, all the air pockets that are at the bottom of this jar. Make sure there are no air bubbles at the bottom of it. Gonna be tasty. And then we're going to close it off with this little contraption that I showed you guys before. All right, guys, I think, um, what advice can I give you for this little puppy? This will keep up to a year if you store it in a cool and dark place, no direct sunlight, that definitely will not help it. If you can withstand for a year, I challenge you, but we'll be enjoying it much sooner. I hope you enjoyed our content and if you do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and, you know, like, comment, share, you know what to do. See you on the next one, The Farming Chefs. Peace out.